Welcome to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. Shep will talk with some of the smartest thinkers in business to help make you more successful in your professional and personal life. This is Amazing Business Radio with Shep Hyken. Hello, everybody. It's Shep Hyken here. We're back with another episode of Amazing Business Radio. We have a repeat offender here. Michelle Falcon is back for the second time but it's been almost five, maybe six years since he's been here. And we have a lot to talk about, but first a couple of quick announcements. If you've got an amazing customer service story that you'd like to share or a question that you'd like to ask, you can find me anywhere on all the different social media channels. And if it is a question, use the hashtag AskShep. I'll either answer it right there. I'll answer it on this show in my newsletter or on my TV show, Be Amazing or Go Home. And you can find that show on Amazon, Apple TV, Roku, and you can go to beamazing.tv. That's beamazing.tv and catch some of the more recent episodes there. Michelle, let me tell you a little bit about Michelle. Michelle Falcon is a restaurant entrepreneur. He is a keynote speaker, an amazing guy. I met him a number of years ago. The last time I saw him was at a gorgeous resort in Naples, Florida, where we were both speaking at the same event, both talking about how to deliver an amazing customer service experience. Michelle, welcome back. Uh, thank you. I noticed uh, your apparel, the St. Louis Blues, uh, did better uh, so far. They're in the playoffs right now. Yeah, yeah. so by the, time, by the time this episode airs, I hope to say they're still in the playoffs. Maybe they're in the, maybe they're in the Stanley Cup finals. But yes, I am a St. Louis Blues hockey fan. I am wearing today, for those that can't see, I am wearing a pullover because tonight the Blues play, and uh, I'm going to cheer them on. And Michelle, you're from Canada, where the second most important religion is hockey, <laughs> and the first most important religion is whatever you are. Yes, well said. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's okay to say that. I don't think I'm going to offend anybody with that. No, I don't um, think so. Yeah, so uh, where are you located up in Canada? I'm in Toronto, formerly Vancouver. I moved to Toronto in 2016. Ah, great. Toronto. And they're doing pretty well. They, they actually are on a run. And uh, not that anybody cares, but uh, I actually played hockey with Brendan Shanahan, who is... Brendan the, Shanahan was one of my favorite players growing up, along with Steve Eiserman. Oh, well, I haven't played with Steve. Uh, almost got to play golf with him. But uh, I guess uh, Brendan is now the GM... Uh, president, president of the Toronto Maple Leafs. President yeah. of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Se yep. Seems like a stand-up guy. Like he is. He's a great guy. Yeah. Great guy. We hated to see him leave St. Louis. Uh, when I would he imagine. Left, uh, St. Louis. We traded him for Chris Pronger, which turned out to be a very good trade. Anyway, enough about hockey. We can talk about that. <laughs> Let's get into what we're here to talk about. So, Michelle, in addition to being a customer service and experience expert, you decided to go uh, and take on a real job, so to speak. You <laughs> opened a restaurant and you really got into the whole hospitality mentality thing. Just prior to the pandemic, you started opening a uh, fast casual brand, which is uh, Braza Peruvian. Uh, it's a Peruvian uh, menu, and that's yeah. part of your background. You're you're Canadian, but you're also Peruvian. In in 2016, I uh, stopped doing management consulting around customer experience management and, and company culture, and I wanted to get into hospitality. So my business partners and I started a hospitality company, and we grew quickly from zero to 200 employees and $20 million in revenue um, in less than two years. So that really Congratulations. Tests, thank you. It, it really tested uh, some of the, the strategies um, that uh, I was helping clients with before. And, um, you know, hospitality, like being restaurants, like every company needs to be hospitable, especially hospitality companies. And it is the key differentiating point. Uh, right. So that's an important point. Every company needs to be hospitable, mm -hmm. have the hospitality mentality. It could be my mechanic, my dentist. You know, I, I've actually worked within dentistry um, when I would advise because you know, this one dentist came to me who owned several practices and said, I, we want to be like the best restaurant. And um, 
that's part of the reason why I went into the restaurant industry is because I, I thought that I, I could do well. And uh, we were doing well until the pandemic came. And that was when we were, I was in full service restaurants. And then I transitioned into fast casual restaurants. And that is with Brassa Premium Kitchen. It's a brand that I'm growing right now. We're at uh, five locations and looking to enter the U.S. Uh, next year uh we're being 2023 regardless of what uh country we're going to be operating in uh the values that will be true to the company is, is building a people first culture uh one where individuals love to deliver great customer experiences and uh, i i love that growth uh model because it's organic and people will come back and see the show again and yeah, if, people. They, if they get treated right they they will come back so did you feel that your background in everything you knew about customer service experience, creating the culture, how important was that as you were building out both of these restaurant uh, chains? It, it was mission critical. It, it, there was nothing else mattered. Uh, it was the foundation of the company. And uh, I was thankful that I had business partners with my last hospitality company. And, and now with uh, Brass Premium Kitchen, this is um, my solo venture. But if you're trying to build a hundred story skyscraper, uh, you have to build the foundation first. And the foundation is by having a company culture that's extremely customer centric. Um, and, and you can't have a customer centric culture if you don't have an employee centric one. Uh, and, and these are all the things that, you know, Shep, you've been talking about for years and years and, and me most recently as well, too, and, and joining kind of that group of professionals that have been pounding this drum. And um, yeah, if, if it works in restaurants and it's mission critical, anybody listening, like I, I don't know what would be more important than some of these methodologies that have proven to work for many brands that we admire, whether it's Starbucks, Zappos or, or the next brand. Right. I, I, I just have to get your take on this. Sure. Why don't all companies get it? Why don't they all deliver a great customer experience? And by the way, I think some of them talk about it and fail, but then there's some that don't talk about it. And it's not that they fail. It's that they never even tried. <laughs> At least that's well, how it appears. I've thought about this very critically. Um, and it's, it's you know not an answer that I think everybody likes, but uh, here I go. Uh, the first one is short-term and long-term thinking. Shep, if I had said, you know, diagnosed a business and said your company culture, or sorry, your customer experience is, uh, you know, average because your learning and development uh, for your team members uh, is substandard and it's going to cost X amount. Let's just call it $50,000 to build that learning management system and make sure that your team members are properly trained on soft skills, customer service. Uh, but I can't promise you when the ROI is going to present itself for you to pay back that cost. Now, what do budgets compete with? Um, well, $50,000 could go toward Instagram marketing, TikTok marketing, and you might see a lead or two come in within 24 hours. So often business leaders are so focused on the next 30 days and don't think about, well, what about my brand two or three years from now? And they excuse themselves from making those investments uh, where they don't know when the definitive return on investment is. Uh, I would think that anybody that starts a business would want to be in, kind of to be in business for 10 years and beyond that. So got to make those investments, uh, especially if you're not a publicly traded company, who do you have to report to yourself? Right. Um, or, or maybe your leader. Uh, if, if, but if you're a senior leader, you've got to make those decisions. And the second um, the second barrier that I'm seeing with company shut is some people just aren't benevolent. Some people just don't care about anybody but themselves. And it's not a popular answer. But if Shep, if, if you were a team member of mine and I asked you, to deliver a great experience to our customers, you're quietly asking yourself, well, what's in it for me? You, you don't treat me well. So why should I go above and beyond for and, your And there, members? by the way, is the problem. When leadership or management doesn't treat employees the way they want their customers treated, it's a complete disconnect. It, it, it's impossible to do. And if you think about, can we draw parallels between the way we behave in our personal life and we do in our professional life? So I am engaged to this great woman named Sophia and we work 
because she treats me well and I treat her well and we see eye to eye. That is why our relationship is fruitful. We need that, like the, the common denominator here is human behavior. And we have to respond this way and behave this way in the workplace also. So if it works in our personal life, I think we can agree that it must work in our professional life if human behavior is a common denominator. Right. And I, I, I want to go back back to your first comment about how you don't see the ROI right away. Yes. And that's a concern. We or I am often asked, how do we sell to the C-suite, the idea that we need to invest in customer service? And often it's a call center, a customer support group. Uh, maybe it's even a, a chief customer officer asking me, we want to buy software, we want to enhance the experience. There's going to be a capital expenditure, or maybe it's just an expense on training. What, what do we do? You have to show ROI. C-suite leadership, that's what they're interested. So your point, they're more interested in seeing what the leads on a TikTok ad come in. I get that. But if you can prove churn is lower, and when you say that, how much lower? Be specific with the number. And by the way, when you save a customer, what is the lifetime value of that customer worth? And you start to assign a dollar value to all of the good things that could happen as a result of making an investment. And quite often that investment pays off handsomely, but even if it doesn't, and it just makes the experience a little bit better and, and it, it's a wash, it's still better than doing nothing. So if the common denominator, that's what's the word? It's really not the common denominator. It's if your bottom line is we need to make money, what about saying we just don't want to lose money? Let's give the best experience possible that we can. By the way, when we are taught or when we teach companies, what I was taught years ago is if you have to say no to somebody, there's got to be a darn good reason. But if you can't figure out how to say yes, ask yourself these questions. Does uh, is this going to be good for both the company and the customer? Will the company lose money over this? Is it immoral? Is it illegal? If it's not, if you answer all these questions the right way. There's no reason not to do it. So uh, yeah, I get it. Anyway, back to that number one, invest and show the ROI and you'll be able to sell it much easier. And we're about ready to take a break, but is there a third idea here you want to share? Well, I want to uh, touch on what you, you took it one step for, uh, uh, further in that, yes, figure out what the KPIs are to be able to sell that to the pre- people that might be uh, holding the purse strings. That is the first thing to do. Um, but inspect what you expect. Uh, you know, any person in leadership must walk through their customer journey and ask themselves, am I proud of this? If I was a customer, would I have friction in doing this customer experience? And often those questions, uh, the investment opportunity will present itself more clearly if they're able to see that, hey, this isn't as great as we thought it was. Yeah. By the way, there's often a disconnect between the leadership or management saying, oh yeah, we've got great customer experience on a scale of one to 10. Would you rate it? And they rate it one number. And then you go out and ask a customer, and it's a much different number. Oftentimes it's lower, which is not good. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, more all about customer service and experience coming from my friend, Michelle Falcon, who is from Toronto now. And he's a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. He's a restaurateur. He's a customer service guru. Don't go away. We're coming right back. Hi, Shep Hyken, your customer service and experience expert. And I'm excited to tell you about my new book, I'll Be Back, How to Get Customers to Come Back Again and Again. Now, this book is packed with idea after idea on how to, just as the title implies, get your customers to come back. In the book, you'll learn that repeat customers aren't always loyal customers. Now, both are great, but there's a big difference. You'll also learn about 10 reasons a customer may stop doing business with you and three reasons you would stop doing business with them. And one of my favorite lessons is a six-step process for creating an I'll Be Back strategy. Of course, there's much, much more. You'll start getting more of your customers to say, I'll be back almost immediately. Just go to www.I'llBeBackBook.com. Dot com. Again, that's www.I'llBeBackBook.com. You're listening to Amazing Business Radio with best-selling author and customer service and business expert, Shep Hyken. We're back on Amazing Business Radio talking with Michelle Falcon, who is a restaurateur, hospitality guru, customer service experience guru, knows it all. He's been there. He's done it. He's a practitioner. And we... Uh, talked about, you know, go to the C-suite, 
They need to see the ROI, uh, training your people. It's about personality and treating people the way you want them to treat your customer. Uh, and so I get it. Uh, some great ideas, some great thoughts. I think, and you and I would both agree, if the leader, the CEO doesn't get it, chances are the company's not going to get it. Is Absolutely. That, yeah. yeah. I, I, that's table stakes uh, for any brand that you may admire, whether it is you know, Union Square Hospitality and Danny Myers, Howard Schultz. By the way, Starbucks. we were just talking, during the break, Union Square Hospitality and Danny Meyer. Danny's been on the show. Danny is uh, a restaurateur as well. Uh, actually, I went to nursery school with him. It's just kind of fun. And he went to my others. Growing up, we knew each other a little bit as well. He's a little bit older than me. Um, but uh, he has a great mind for restaurants. He gets it. He also is the founder of Shake Shack. But I think if, you know, here's the thing. If the CEO or the leader, owner of a company, depending on what size of company you are, doesn't feel it's important, there's a pretty good chance. Or even if they feel it's important, they're not executing well, it's going to fail. But there are times, there are times that, um, you know, even if the CEO does want to get it done, doesn't seem to work still anyway. Let's talk about that scenario because, uh, you know, the leader decides, you know, you've got to push the message down. How do you get everybody to buy into it? Yeah, I, one of the rules of thumb for me um, in what I've observed is show me somebody's strategic plan, quarterly strategic plan, and I'll tell you what's most important to them. So if you see something for us in Brass and we're, we're a smaller company and, and you know, hopefully we'll achieve our goals and, and become bigger, um, you're always going to see uh, a strategic pillar on our um, strategic plan uh, titled uh, Drive Wow. So that is aligned with our customer experience. You want to gonna... create that wow experience? Yeah. And what tactical things are we going to do? Uh, pardon me, it's drive experience is the, the strategic pillar. The tactic would be like, okay, so what are we going to do in this next three months to ensure we're continuously refining our customer experience? So for example, uh, one quarter, it might be, we're going to launch net promoter score. Okay? The next quarter, it might be, we're going to redevelop our learning and development uh, soft skills, customer, uh, customer service training programs, right? Because the tactic has to serve the strategic pillar. And then, and then we have to ask ourselves, well, how much is that tactic going to cost us? Can we afford this tactic? And what might the ROI be? We are not a publicly traded company. You know, Brass is still a, a small but emerging company, but I still like to behave like we do have to report to Wall Street because it's a good practice, right? It's good to be able to identify what those KPIs are. How are we going to measure success? Now, not everything needs to have a definitive answer for me um, in terms of what is the specific ROI. If I know it's good business, I'm still going to do it. If I know that if I was the customer and I would want that experience delivered to me, I'm still going to do it. But the behavior, the, the habitual behavior of quarterly uh, strategic plans and making sure that you have something that serves that customer experience, that is the best way that I have found to ensure that you aren't just you know, talking a big game and that you're actually your actions are following what you tell your team and what you tell the market and your customers. Mm, very interesting. Very interesting. Well, let's jump to um, another topic. Are there companies out there that you uh, really, you look at and you say, wow, they've got it right. And, and what can we learn from them? Who are the companies that would serve us best to admire and emulate? Yeah, there, there's the ones that we've talked about forever, right? The Disney's, the Starbucks and, and so forth, uh, the Rich Carlton's of the world. Uh, but one of the ones that, I've, uh, some companies that I'm trying to uncover are ones that maybe aren't as well known. In Canada, we have, um, we don't have Cash App or any of these type of uh, apps yet in Canada. However, we have one uh, called Wealth Simple. And there, they, you can do banking through them, you can buy stocks, you can buy crypto. Um, 
But as a customer, I'm totally blown away, not just by their digital customer experience, but their more traditional customer experience also. Uh, so the digital one is, you know, what's their UX look like? What's their interface like? It's so smooth, right? I, I became a little addic addicted to buying stocks uh, late last year where I was like, this is so, it was almost like gaming um, because it, 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 they, they make you feel like it is a game. This is true. Um, and um, it makes it easier. Absolutely. It's very seamless. There's no friction. Uh, but then it, there was a transaction that didn't go through well. So I had the opportunity to call their customer service line. I said, okay, well, let's see if their traditional customer experience being call center matches what their online experience was like. And I have to tell you, Chef, it was even better. Okay. The hours of operation, and this is a publicly traded profitable company, their hours of operation to call was very generous. Monday to Sunday, I think it was like 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's that's pretty good operating hours for a call center. Um, they responded uh, to three of my calls and I timed them less than 45 seconds. So that tells me that their C-suite has given their call center leadership team enough uh, budget to be able to afford these labor dollars yeah, to have a properly. great- mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and the person was just like, I wanted to hire her for my restaurant. She was just so hospitable, so kind, so patient. And I was new to buying stocks on my own. So I had many, you know, very uh, junior questions. I was blown away. The company's called Wealth Simple. Um, you know, I, I don't know if your um, uh, listeners outside of Canada can, can use the app, but um, try to find those companies that aren't so recognizable right um because you know often maybe they don't have as big a budget as disney or Ritz carlton so they have to get a bit more scrappy um that's one that i i was completely, completely that's a great point with. i'm actually putting together a presentation and i said you, this is who your customers compare you to it's not your competitor they compare you to Amazon and Ritz Carlton and Nordstrom and Apple. And, you know, you can do a half a dozen easily recognized logos and brands. They're also comparing you, by the way, to that little restaurant down the street mm -hmm. that treats you so well that you can't yeah. wait to come back. And you're thinking, man, if they could bottle that up, they could sell that. It would be worth a fortune. And that's what, you know, great companies are. You don't have to be big. You could be tiny. But the point is, you recognize uh, your opportunities. I love your idea, by the way, you mentioned a few minutes ago that on a quarterly basis, take on a project. You mentioned NPS, Net Promoter Score. So yep. maybe maybe it's this quarter we get feedback. Why are we getting feedback? Not just to find out if we did a good job, we need a baseline mm -hmm. so that we do feedback again six months from now after we've done training, which is the second quarter. And yes. you mentioned doing that in, in the second quarter. We can go back into NPS again and see if there's a change between quarter one and quarter three, where in between we implemented some strong customer service training. Companies should take note that uh, Michelle is talking about uh, measurement, talking about training, talking about some common sense ideas. You also mentioned, I don't want this one to go by, uh, mystery shop your own company. If you're a leader, yeah. get out and pretend you're a customer and and try calling your people at uh, prime time customer support hours and see what the experience is like. Go in and do a little mystery shopping and play undercover boss, if you will, and uh, see what it's like to experience firsthand what your customers are actually experiencing themselves. We are almost out of time. I always love to end with the final question, and it's the one thing question. Is there one last nugget of information that you would love to share with us? If so, what would that be? If the ultimate goal is an exceptional customer experience, you have to habitually audit your interview process for every single person that you hire. That I have found to be mission critical to be able to recruit people and build a workforce of individuals that see the same thing that you see um, because it becomes infinitely more difficult if you don't. Yeah, so you're basically saying two words, hire right. You know, hire, hire the right better, hire yes any two words around <laughs> optimizing how you hire yes i agree yep and then once you get good people train them train them well i mean chances are you hired them if they were good because of their backgrounds and what they're capable of doing so make sure they they align into what you're doing and then let them do their job and watch the magic happen 
You bet. All right. This is why we call it Amazing Business Radio, because we have people like Michelle Falcon on the show. Thanks for being back. Thank you, Shep. Good luck to your St. Louis Blues. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, everybody, that wraps it up. Another episode of Amazing Business Radio, and we will be back next week with another interview. And until that time, this is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing. <laughs>